Lord bless all the sins of brothers and sisters. And it's good that God sees each and every one of us in our hearts. Because it's not easy these days to serve the Lord. The weather is cold. For you to even get out shows you love the Lord. Right? If you don't love the Lord, you won't be here tonight. Only if you are working. If you are working, then it happened that way. But other than that, you come out, it shows your heart is serving the Lord. So God bless you for being here. You're going to listen to my broken English and my broken words, but please bear with me and let's all pull together that God will do it. I can't do it, but he can. Amen. And I'm trusting in him that he will come and do it. May the Lord bless you. It's a privilege for me to stand here. I don't take this place lightly because this position is a position whereby God placed you there to preach to his children. The children know the word already because the word is in you already. So if I say anything that is contrary to his word, I'm responsible that God will punish me or deal with me. So God bless you. I won't take my time. May the Lord bless you. It wasn't easy for me because my uncle who raised me, who loved me, has passed away. But he was a good man to me in my life, part of my life. He's, he was 96 years old. He passed away and he wouldn't let even his children bury him. While I was a kid, he used to tell me, Kofi, when you grow and I pass away, I'm leaving you, I'm, I'm raising you, you are the only one that can bury me. So he left that responsibility with me, now he is gone. So I have to uh, maybe go and do it, but I'll wait until the preparation. But anyway, he is gone. God where is still alive. Amen. We have to carry God away. Amen. That's the most important thing. So, brother, sorry, brother, please come and open up a prayer. You, brother, please, I forgot your name. But, yeah, I just want you to open a prayer. Brother Carson. I know the name, but sometimes I forgot it. God bless you, but the Lord doesn't forget about you. So lead us in prayer before I bring the way. Gracious Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. We gather here this evening. Yes, Lord. Father, not just to pass away time. Yes, Lord. Father, there's something calling in our heart. There's a deep calling to the deep. Yes, Lord. Father, we're responding to that call. Yes, Lord. Come and gather here this evening to hear that word come forth, Father, and this evening. Yes, Lord. We have that something to be said, Father, that will just uplift each one, Father, and yes, go away Lord. from this place where you say it was good to be here. Father, you have spoken to us, Father. Yes, Lord. Individual this evening, Father, is here from different parts and different and lives, Father, and different yes, problems, Lord. Father. And you see it all, and you know it all, Father, but you are in control of it all. Yes, Father. Yes, Father, Father, this evening we come with open hearts. And Father, and ask you would just come here this evening and speak to us, Father. And just bless us and bless our brother as he stands. Father, yes, may you Lord. give him the strength Put away the natural part, part, Father, and may you just come, and may you anoint his lips, Father, yes, and then our ears to receive, Father, yes, he may receive something from you to see. Hallelujah. Blessings as we gather, we worship you now in your heart. In Jesus Christ's name we all we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Uh, our scriptures will be taken from uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. And second will be, uh, uh, sorry, uh, first is, that's second. First is Matthew chapter 11, 28, and second is first Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Matthew 11, 28, first. That's where the Lord gave it to me. 
So that's what I am willing to bring in. If you are there, please say you are there. Let's see. Chapter 11, verse 28. Amen. As we read God's word, everybody is as hoping the scriptures. Amen. Yeah. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. Okay, First Peter 5. Chapter 7. It goes, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Please be seated. You know, the way that we read, many a times, right, we forgot. We, God has chosen us. And when he chose us, we were in the world. So we have things locked up in us. Things that are traditional and cultural, I would say cultural. Things that we were raised up by our parents or friends. We pick up in friends or school or whether you were a businessman, you pick up at work and all kinds of things. That is contrary to God's way. Amen. But when it comes to God, we human beings, we are, it, are anybody hearing me correct? Yes. We human beings, it's hard for us to, I mean, to even though we are in the message, God has brought us out from the world. But it's hard for us to, I mean, bring those things before God and sometimes voice it out. Because we are ashamed to voice it out. And we keep it going, going like that, going like that. And the Lord is saying, all your trouble, all your burdens, the things that are not mine, cast it on me. If you cast it on me, I'll take care of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And when you go in the scriptures, you will see Mary Magdalene cast his trouble on Jesus. Jesus delivered her. Paul cast her trouble on Jesus. Jesus says, my grace is sufficient. Paul had a temper and all kinds of trouble that was hidden in his heart. Even though he was a prophet, there was things that was hidden in his heart that was contrary to God's way, and he was crying out. He took it to God, and God delivered him. And says, Paul, you are mine. You are my son. You are my prophet. I chose you. You are, you are an apostle. Right? Because Paul was the one that chose him to come and lead us, the Gentiles, to open our eyes to see the salvation. Right? right? And here was a prophet, but he's having problems. Right? And God is saying, cast all your cares upon me. Anything that bothers you that you don't understand, bring it up. I am God. I am your healer. I am your savior. I am your deliverer. I am the one that all your trouble. No one else. That's why beside me there is no other God. We will see the children of Israel. Why they were in the wilderness uh, in Egypt. Banned, slave, trouble, all kinds of trouble they were going through. 
right? When they brought those troubles before God cried out, God called Moses and says, I have come down. I have heard their cry and I have come down to deliver them. And so is it today. Hallelujah. God has come down to take us to the rest. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He is not sleeping. He is not slumber at his promise. Yes, sir. When he speaks, he will perform it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When God speaks, he will perform it. Hallelujah. Whether we like it or not, it's going to be fulfilled. So we have to cast all of our babies, things that we don't understand, things that, let me tell you, I have gone through a lot, and I'm going through a lot of things. That's what this message came to me. I'm, work, I'm working, I give my boss 20 pieces of sofa every day. One mistake is like hyena coming to my throat, mm. and I was fed up. Mm. God knows my heart, mm. and I prayed to him, who do you think you are? Mm. I'm tired. The burden is so hard, it's over, over, over me. Can't you see? I'm working like a plane in the sky mm. for you to, even though I need money, but you have to show respect. I've done this job since I'm 17 years old, up to now. And I'm doing it for you, and you want to treat me like that? No, I will not take it from you. I don't care how much money you have. If Listen, I will not take this. If you don't change that character, any time you come to me, I will speak eye to eye with you. Because I'm not going to take it. Yes, sir. God, you are his son. Mm -hmm. You are his daughter. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So don't hide things in your heart. Right, right. Don't hold things in your heart. Mm -hmm. The Lord wanted to deliver you in every aspect. Hallelujah. That's why this scripture that we read, yes. it says, take my yoke yes. upon you. My burden is light. Yes. Where do you want to be free? This world. Yes. This world, you can't be free on this world. I don't care how much money you have, how much business you are, how poor you are, how uh, middle you are, or short or tall, or you think you are nice or beautiful. You can't fit in if you are God's bride. You cannot fit in in the, the, the world out there. That's right. That's so run to Christ. Yes, Let us stand for him. Because I am your shelter. Yes. Not the shelter out there. The shelter that they have is not a real shelter. I am your shelter. I am your deliverer. Yes. I am your healer. Yes. I am everything to you. Turn your eyes upon me. When the children of Israel, Mary Magdalene, a prostitute, he was caught on the very act, performing sex with a Hebrew man. They caught them. They were doing it. So, excuse me, it, it may sound ridiculous. He couldn't even maybe put her clothes proper and because they, they wanted to stone her. Why she, she got up Maybe they hold the man, Mary Magdalene is running, running. And he said, oh, in his heart, oh God, help me. I have committed adultery. Lord, help me. He can speak loud, but her heart was crying. She was casting her curse upon the Lord and Savior Jesus yes, Christ. By running like that and praying on her heart. Her heart was praying. Then he found himself in front of the law, right? Because all her care, her care mm. he has dropped on the law. Yes. This is what salvation is all about. The Pharisees, the religious people, oh, even 
been blessing with the word carefully. There's a master. Even they are not ashamed and they don't feel guilty on their self. They said master. It shows they have seen, let's say they don't know Jesus is God yet, but they have seen the power that Jesus do. So they call him what? Master. We find this woman in adultery called Moses Law said stone her, which is stone her. Jesus began to write. Mary Magdalene has cast her curse upon the Lord. So the Lord is writing. Now that the, all the curse and all his trouble that he cast upon the Lord, the Lord is writing on the ground. Mm -hmm. Only for the Pharisees, mm -hmm. for them to see where they stand, mm -hmm. the religious people, <coughs> right? Where they stand. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, these days, you want to check me, you can find so many folk. Mm -hmm. If I want to check you, I'll find so many folk. Yes. Mm -hmm. But forget about that. Yeah, okay. We are not here to check one another's fault. Mm -hmm. But is that not true? Yes. Oh, God. We are not we, we're not here to check one another's wall. No. Look away to Jesus. Yes. That's what we are about. Yes. This hour Hallelujah. is all about Jesus. Yes. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about anybody. Yes, Lord. It's all about Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let us look again. Look at something. Glory to you, Nick. A man that God has chosen to lead Israelites to judge, to bring them from their bondage. This man has backslide, right? Went and chose an adultery, paganism woman who wouldn't serve God, who would betray Samson, which is God. Samson has got blinded by the Pharisees. Here is Samson, powerless. But even though the Pharisees were treating Samson rough, one day Samson recognized who he is. Says, Lord, let me die with these Philistines, or yeah. circumcised Philistines, mm -hmm. for what they have done to me mm -hmm. and to your way, mm -hmm. because I am the man that's supposed to fulfill your way. Right. I know, and so do you. Mm -hmm. Who do you think God has chosen this day? Mm -hmm. It is you. Yeah. You have to fulfill God's way. Mm -hmm. yes. We are the last boat that have to clean everything before we leave. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, brother, they don't know. If you don't know, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. you are bigger than what you think. Tell us, tell us. You are stronger than what you think. Yes. Thank you. So something cry out mm -hmm. before the Lord, and the Lord heard his cry. Mm -hmm. And by laying all his Cast upon the Lord, the power of God came upon him. Amen. Samson, who was Philistine, thought they had captured him. He was nothing. When the Spirit of God came, Hallelujah. he slew 10,000 Philistines, yes. uh, 3 or 4,000 Philistines mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. And so do we. You may think you are nothing. The Bible says, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. Yes. And you are. You are. Each and every single one of God's wife. You are. You may not think so, but the scripture said so. Amen. God cannot lie. I lie, you lie, every single one of us, we lie. Only God that doesn't lie. The Lord and Savior Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. He is the perfect one. Glory. That's why he chose us before the 
foundations of this world, place himself in us. And the seed of God in us does not sink. So God looked to his seed inside you, yes. and that seed is perfect. Yes. I don't care what you think, who you are. You may say I am weak. I fight. Uh, when I was coming here to preach today, even me and my wife, I get angry. Mm -hmm. You may say, Brother Coffee, you come in here to preach and you get angry. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is the outside man. Okay? Outside man will get angry mm -hmm. with certain things. But that doesn't stop me being a son, a child of God. Hallelujah. That doesn't stop me from standing here tonight. God doesn't look at that because God knows my heart that I don't want that. Things were going, I have to say something, he got angry, and I couldn't hold it, and it, it happened. And I feel so bad already. And I said, Lord, you know. <laughs> God is good, brother. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is good. Amen. Isn't you good? Amen. Don't look at yourself. Cast all your cares you, upon him. Amen. For he cared for you. Amen. At this hour, if you don't do that, you will fail. You look at yourself, you are going to fail. I look at myself, I'm going to fail. There are things even God going to deal with us day in, day in, day in, day in, day in, day in, till we get up from here. Okay? So let us love one another. Let us cast our cares upon him. He wanted to, he loved us more than what we think. And we want to solve our problems more than what we think. Yeah. When Moses was using his intellect to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt, what did he happen? He threw Egyptian. That was intellectual. Right? You can go all run around cold. By in time, that will do the job. But if you allow God, you know that, hey Lord, I'm no good. I am not, hey, I am not good. I am the worst one. Sometimes I get angry. Even sometimes you speak to me, I get angry. Sometimes you tell me things, I am no good. There's no good in me. I'm not seeing myself good. The Lord says, okay. At least I can use you. Just bring all those things to me and I will deal with it. I will deal with it. Check the scriptures. Abraham lied. Right? Isaac lied. Okay? Man and mother in coming adultery. Alright? On and on and on. Paul, let them stone Stephen. Which one of them, apart from, I will say, Joseph, Jacob, oh, you bring him here, some of us will run away. <laughs> because you know what? He's a crook in our modern time. A crook like that. You want to accept a crook? But the Lord says, I see him, and I love him. Then, oh, don't talk about him. A man who commits adultery with somebody's wife, take that man, put him in front of war, let that man die, and this man, you're going to call him. God says, he's a man after my own heart. What are you going to take? God is not looking for outward appearance. Amen. He has looked to us, chose us. Before the foundations of this world, your steps are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah, sir. Every path that you have to take, yeah. Jesus has ordained it. Mm -hmm. Your mistakes are ordained. Mm -hmm. All you have to do, cast a 
everything upon him. For he cared for you. Take his yoke. Listen to the tale. Read the Bible and believe. Know that yourself can never do it. Know that yourself will make mistakes. Yes, sir. And you are not good. Mm -hmm. If you are good, God don't need good people. As a matter of fact, God needs bad people. <laughs> In my eyes, that's the way I see it. Bad, bad people. Right? If the people are there, they're going to say, this guy is no good. But God hiding in what? Simplicity. Yeah. And reveal himself in simplicity. <laughs> right? Because the body skin that was in the Ark of Covenant is you. That bag is covering you. But inside, God is hiding me. The lily come out from where? More. Please. So the lily, when it come out, the perfume, we got the best perfume we could ever use. But if you see the lily in the valley and in the mouth, you wouldn't like it. And it's you. God is hidden in you. Every wife of Christ, God is interested in you. No man, last time I was preaching, I said it. No man wants his wife to wear rags. He will work, bleed in his hand to buy clothes to feed his wife. If he is a true man, he will do that. How much more? How much more God who created you and me? Cast your cares upon him. For he cared for you. Without you casting your cares upon him, it's free moral agency, right? Salvation. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to do with God is free moral agency. God has given you salvation. But if you don't cast your cares upon him, how can he solve the problem for you? He won't force you. He won't drag you. He wants you free will to do it. Your free will do it, then God get the glory. Then he shows to Satan, have you seen my servant? Have you seen my son, my daughter? Have you seen Susan's so He's working with me. Don't worry about you're going to make me angry. Sometime, let me tell you, give me a month, believers, we're going to get angry. But one another, it's happening. I've seen it. I've been the person for 26 years. You think I don't see it, please? I've seen it. I make mistakes. But I'm barely sitting here. One time I make mistake to him, I have to go apologize to him. Listen, when it comes to God, I'm not ashamed of nothing. I've seen people call me devil. Believers in the message. I, I see things. Not now. From where since I come. Right? And I will cry, I wanted to quit and go back. And I come, the Lord used Pastor Simon to preach. One time, I was even tired. I said, I'm going, that's it. The Lord told me, I was in Scarborough. He told me, He says, You want to go? You think you do it? I did it. And I'm going to show you. He brought a sinner in front of me. And he called the Bible talking with me. Every time I shake my head, this guy will go. When the Lord wanna deal with you, he gonna bring a guy right to your nose. He's gonna speak whether you like it or not. He's gonna come left, right, left, right. I come to the church the next day. I said, last day, blue day. My wife, I told my wife, I'm coming today, that's it. I'm going back, I'm tired, I'm fed up. For someone get in the pulpit, he preached. The Almighty, uh, uh, the Almighty troubled him. He preached a message about Job. And it was like an electric fire inside my heart. 
Everything I was on the street talking, he was talking. So I know. Let us, the enemy will come. But let's get together. Let's get together. No matter what I think. Let me tell you, this time I stand, I know who I am. Right. Not like before. I know who I am. I am not afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. No, God doesn't give spirit of fear. Our brother was preaching and he said it. God does not give spirit of fear. Spirit of bad down. Bad down to enemy. Bad down to wars. But I see at work. Even the people were telling me, uh, you talking to the boss like that. I said, who do you think he is? A guy that went very hard for him. Sometimes he treat him till even I get angry. One mistake. It's like the whole world broke down. What kind of person is that? I don't get it. Brothers and sisters, I don't get it. Right? I don't get it. Then sometimes you want to deny, sometimes you No. Come out plainly and let the people know who you are. Don't treat people like that. I'm a Christian. I hate hypocrisy. But me, if you really walk with me, you and and sleep with me and talk with me, you know that I'm not a man with hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wasn't raised like that. Amen. I'm raised plain talk. I don't want to smile with you, but in my heart, I'll be a hypocrite at your back. No, what you see is what you get. Amen. And the Lord wants us to come out, yes. take the cross. Yes. His Lord is covering us so that all of our burdens, let me tell you, there is no sickness. As I stand here, some of you may not know. Doctors have told me I have cancer. The cancer is here. Yeah, yeah. And I asked them, what you gonna do? I just I went to all kinds of machines. And they says, the only thing we're gonna do, we're gonna give you uh, radiation therapy. We do the operation therapy, this, this operation we can't guarantee because they hear them uh, all kinds of talk. And I went through a lot. But first thing I did was run to Pastor Simon to pray for me. So when he prayed for me, and I brought the book they gave me, I said, some of the book, I said, brother, read it. And he read it. And he says, bring me the book. And he told me, he says, I and my wife want to pray for you. I said, okay, thank you, Pastor. But one thing I'm telling you, I'm not just preaching. I'm telling what I'm saying, I am being led. So take you may be a believer, rich poor, you're gonna hit the wall. You can fool me, I can fool you, but you're gonna hit the wall. When the wall hit, then you it will be you and God alone. You have called it up. That time, what are you going to do if you don't cast your case upon the Lord? If you don't cast your case upon the Lord, what are you going to do? Right? But let me tell you, the last time I was going to the hospital, I took my son Paul. I said, Paul, I'm going with you for you to see. Because I said, listen, son, I'm not afraid. I am certain of God. Whatever can come. But if the Lord want to take me now, I'm ready to go. Tomorrow, I'm ready. The future, I'm ready. But inside me tells me I'm not here to go. Inside me, tell me I am not 
yet to go. This is not the first time. I have faced this twice. I could hear many people when I was in Nigeria talking, oh, by tomorrow he's dead. And I could hear people talking like that. All those that talk against me that are the Lord, some of them come to the grave. I'm still alive. Who did it? Yeah. And now, the same thing, the devil is coming again with cancer, days, that, that. Listen, I'm not afraid of nothing. Mm-hmm. Oh, nothing. Yeah. Nothing. No sickness can take me. You have to kill Jesus inside my soul mm-hmm. before he can kill me. Mm-hmm. If you come that revelation like that, it doesn't bother you. Sometimes I'm working and pain inside it. I say, shut up, cancer. Let me do my job. And I'll come up to you. I am telling every one of you to encourage you. Amen. Cast your curse upon the Lord. Amen. So he will care for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The pastor here, we, we want somebody, it's good, brother, Dick, he come and talk, when he was talking cancer, and in his head, this, that, and I'm sitting right there, and I says, that's so many people recognize our pastor that God has given to us, not because he's black, me, if you really know me, I don't care whether black man, white man, <laughs> Chinese man, no. That's not India man, no. I don't look to that. As a matter of fact, me, I look away to Jesus. Amen. Only the Lord, if He chose this brother right here to preach for me, that so me. Once I can see God in Him, moving, so be it. We don't have to look, and I believe every one of you are like that. That's why you come here to let our faith lift up. Hallelujah. Stand behind the man of God. Yeah. When Pastor Samuel prayed for me, I says, done. I says to my heart, done. Glory. I didn't even tell you. I, I, I said, done. Whether the cancer did that, I don't care. I'm still healthy. You see me. It's years that this has happened to me. When it happened to fall, how long did he stay? Gone. If he had Pastor Simon, he knew Pastor Simon and he was here, and how this day, wouldn't you think he would be standing? Yeah. Cool. He would be standing. God that we serve is a real God. Yeah. It's not a dead God. Yeah. A lot of people. They think Jesus is in the tomb. No. You listen to the tale. What a brown tale. Look at the miracle that God let him do. Look at dead people that people that don't have eyes. He pray, I come. Yeah. Right? People that get salvation. Sister Eddie Wright, children, he is born. They they can receive the word. What was that? The spoken word is the original seed. Yes, Hallelujah. It's not dead in the tomb. It's alive. Amen. Right? Our pastor, a pillar of fire has come to this church. He has preached. We all know we've seen it. Even some of us, God visiting us. We've seen it. Let us cast our curse upon Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If we don't cast our curse upon him, you, let me tell you, you can fool around. But once you come to the wall, wall like that, that time, you will be weak. Believers, even sometimes your own, the devil, sometimes, even the believer, when they get weak, the devil will just speak on the flesh. Recognize it's not your sister, it's not your brother, it's just the devil. But you don't say nothing. You understand? You don't say nothing to them. You just walking. You looking away to Jesus. Yes, Alright? And each 
and every one of us have a plan the Lord is taking. Mm -hmm. So you can follow the Lord as you lead yes. and walk the walk. You understand? Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, we come to a point. Job came to a point that he knew that no man could help him but only the Lord. If Job came to that point, what about you and me? We're going to go through that point. Sometimes it may look that even you are cast. But God is still there. Yeah. Sickness may come. All you this way, that way, may look you are cast. But God is still there. Yeah. Still casting your curse upon him. For he cared for you. Take my yoke. My burden is light. What's, sorry, brother, what's the time says? Is it nine? Eight All right, so I have more time to, I was thinking maybe I passed the time. Because in Africa, when I'm preaching, I don't care. But in here, you have to care. Right? In Africa, I remember preaching and in a village, an old lady. I preached all my heart and thinking I'm almost done. The lady says, come on, come on, come on. In another way, what I preach, he hasn't got, it's like, a, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just tired. You want me to, that was just a step. You want me, you want me to go on? I says, wow, this is not, but God knows. Amen. Over there, they don't work hard like this. In here, we have a lot of hard work. Even business people, like he, he, he work very hard. I know. And the workers we work very hard. So God places in a different atmosphere. So we have to be balanced. So look at Job. A man that used to be rich. Everybody loved him. And all of a sudden, tries begin to come in his way. Right? Job tries. My God. His children wipe out. His business wipe out. His wife says, Why don't we be cursed you? The God that you believe. Right? His wife has given up. He has gone to the flesh. Maybe before he was shouting, Hallelujah! Glory to God! Because money was there, no, he could go shopping, he could buy the shoes he want, he could live in the home he want, he could live in the car he want. Now all those things gone. And he see his husband, boys, on him. What kind of God is this that you claim you serve? Curse him. Let us go for our riches. Job knew the God that he served. Yeah. Job began to worship yes. God. Hallelujah. Job began to cast his curse upon the Lord. Oh, Job knew that the Lord gave it, mm. the Lord take it. Yes, sir. Blessed be the name. Hallelujah. Even to a point, he says, even if one destroys my body in my flesh, I will see God. Amen. That is the believer. That is God chosen believer. They don't go for because of pleasure of things. They don't go because of uh, my business is down, so I have to uh, uh, watch what I'm doing and, and, and push God aside a little bit. No. no. 
John worshiped God. And God was so pleased with John. He gave him more than what he used to have before. And all his children were back with him in God. So don't let us give up. Don't give up. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Yes. Amen. If you don't cast your cares upon him, he can't do nothing for you. It's your free moral agents. He will not going to force you, but cast it upon him because he's God. That's what makes him God. When you cast your curse upon him, okay, Matthew 8, chapter 1, if you read it, look, the man that was, I believe, was sick with uh, uh, leprosy uh, or something, sickness, Matthew 8, 1, let me read it, then we'll see, because we have time. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1, I want to bring the scripture correct. Because if I don't uh, read it, okay. It says when he was when he was coming down from the mountain, a great multitude followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, "Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean." And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Saying, I will be, be, uh, uh, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leper was cleansed. The man worshipped the Lord and cast his curse upon him. All his sickness upon him. That was the thing that was bothering him. When he cast that curse, by worshiping the Lord, right, that opened the door. Right? That man had revelation. <clears throat> you see, when you come to church, sisters brought.